right. Good morning, everyone. Today we have Leslie with us from AmeriCorps, AmeriCorps Vista, correct? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, and she's just going to be talking to us about what they do and some opportunities you guys may have in the future. Great. Thank you so much. Um, yes, so my name is Leslie Graybeal. I'm uh, in my main job is that I'm the director of service learning and volunteerism at University of Central Arkansas. Um, and we uh, have a an AmeriCorps Vista program that we host um, at UCA. And so I want to tell you a little bit about that and then um, also just share, share some general information about AmeriCorps programs um, and national service more generally, because um, there are several kind of different uh, directions that folks can take with that, um, but they're all uh, really great opportunities if you are uh, interested in uh, national in uh, public service, nonprofit careers, government careers, um, or really, you know, even in the private sector, um, the AmeriCorps name is really widely recognized by some major employers. So um, it's a great opportunity. All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And oh, it's showing me the this meeting. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to tell uh, tell you a little bit about the UCA Vista program. Uh, but before I do that, uh, I want to just give everybody an overview of um, just what Vista is all about. Uh, as well as some other national service opportunities. And then we'll talk about um, where to find these opportunities and just kind of how to uh, how to prepare if you're interested in applying for a national service opportunity. Okay. Um, so the mission of VISTA, um, VISTA is a really cool um, organization. It stands for Volunteers in Service to America. Um, and it actually was launched in the 1960s as sort of a domestic Peace Corps. Mm -hmm. Um, and the purpose of VISTA is for uh, VISTA members to uh, actually uh, build capacity for a nonprofit organization uh, and or for communities um, and help bring individuals and communities out of poverty. So um, the purpose of AmeriCorps VISTA is all about poverty alleviation. Um, and so any VISTA project is going to be somehow linked to, um, to poverty and empowering communities to uh, come up with solutions to uh, local poverty related problems in their community. And then VISTA members are also always going to be building capacity. Um, and what that looks like is uh, we usually Or direct service national service placement. So there are other types of national service where folks are um, really just um, on the ground doing direct services um, for communities. So maybe, you know, volunteering in a food pantry and uh, handing out food boxes. Those are the kind of things we think about when we think about direct service, tutoring, mentoring, that kind of thing. Building capacity really means being kind of more behind the scenes with a nonprofit uh, or with a community to help them develop those programs. So instead of doing the tutoring or handing out the food boxes, you might be uh, managing the volunteers who do that and recruiting people to volunteer to do those jobs. Uh, or you might be applying for a grant or helping to fundraise to actually support uh, those programs that provide direct service in the community. So it's kind of more of a professional type of program um, as opposed to um, just really like boots on the ground kind of service. Um, but of course, building capacity uh, has incredible value for communities because uh, uh, it's sustainable. It lasts. Um, so when you help to build an organization's capacity to offer a service, it has a lasting impact beyond the time that you are there with that organization. All right, so that's what VISTA is all about. Uh, and there's just a real short video from AmeriCorps that I want to play that explains this well. Oops. This is your moment to take the path less traveled, to break the status quo, to stop talking about the problem and be the solution. This is your moment to create your own future, to bring people together and seek common ground. This is your moment to make our country safer, smarter, and healthier. You can inspire a kid to a brighter future. 
build a house for a family in need or rebuild a community after disaster. Work in the wilderness to protect our public lands. Help a veteran find a home, a job, or a mentor. This is your moment to shape the future. This is your moment to be the greater good. Join America. All right. So I like that video because you get to see uh, just come up all the different things um, that AmeriCorps members might be involved in. Um, and, you know, AmeriCorps is a program that takes place all around the country, um, but we'll talk a little bit about, um, you know, how you can decide whether uh, more of a national search or a local opportunity would be the best for you. Um, so before we talk about um, anything else related to AmeriCorps and AmeriCorps VISTA, um, I did want to outline some of the benefits of participating um, in VISTA and so and really for all of um, for all national service opportunities. So for VISTA or other types of AmeriCorps programs. Um, and so one thing that all AmeriCorps programs have in common is that members will earn a living allowance. It's not called a wage because it's not a job. Um, it's a service position. Um, and so you're when you serve in AmeriCorps, you're kind of this middle ground between a volunteer and a staff member, um, you're a national service member. And so that living allowance varies depending on the uh, part of the country that you're serving in. Um, but for VISTA uh, here in Arkansas, the living allowance is a little over $13,000 a year. Um, and that's a big challenge for a lot of people to live on that living allowance. So one thing that you'll find out if you apply for a VISTA position and interview for a VISTA position, um, something that the folks who are interviewing for that position will probably ask about is what strategies you have for getting by on such a modest living allowance for an entire year. Um, so a lot of times VISTA members will live with several roommates. You may be living at home uh, and taking kind of a gap year, um, or you, know, you may have another job at the same time. Uh, and all of those things are uh, totally normal um, and a lot of VISTA members also uh, end up using, uh, you know, public assistance kind of programs. So they're eligible to enroll in SNAP benefits or if they're working at a site that offers some kind of benefit to the community, they may be eligible for those benefits. So um, it's really an opportunity because VISTA is all about alleviating poverty. It's an opportunity for folks um, to just, you know, face some of the same struggles that the people that they're working with and serving um, are facing, not just for one year, uh, but, you know, longer term as well. And then a great benefit of uh, VISTA and any other type of AmeriCorps service is being eligible for an education award or an end of service stipend. Um, and so for somebody who does full time service for a year, the education award right now is about $6,000. It's set at the um, same rate as Pell grants. Um, and so it varies each year, um, but right now it's $6,000. And um, that's an award that you get access to after you finish your entire service term. Um, and so it can be used to pay back student loans or it can be used uh, for future education. Um, so it could be used um, you know, for somebody who hasn't gone to college uh, yet, it can be used for college. If you finished your college uh, degree and you're taking a year to do VISTA service, it could be used for graduate school. Um, or if you don't think you're going to have a use for that education award, you can opt for an end of service stipend instead. Um, that's paid out all at once, um, but it's not as high as the education award. Um, right now, it's about $1,500. Um, so it's a smaller amount um, than the education award, but you're just uh, they just write you a check for that. Um, and then another big benefit of uh, VISTA service is that professional development. So, um, you know, getting that experience in a professional setting because VISTA is more of a behind the scenes capacity building kind of job, um, you get a lot of great experience, um, which we'll talk more about later. And then finally, all AmeriCorps members get access to um, health benefits. 
Uh, it's not health insurance exactly, it's more of a catastrophic um, coverage, but they do receive a health benefit. Um, and then if uh, you have any dependent children, uh, you also can receive a child care benefit uh, while you're serving. And then um, all AmeriCorps members receive non-competitive eligibility for federal employment after their term of service. And what that means is that if you apply for any kind of federal employment, um, you're given kind of, a, you're, you're kind of a cut above uh, just a regular applicant um, in terms of how closely they consider your application. So um, it can be a great advantage um, because this is a federal program. It's very well recognized in uh, other federal agencies and federal employment, um, as well as any government employment. So state governments are also gonna be really well familiar uh, with AmeriCorps um, and uh, in the nonprofit sector, it's also very well known. All right. Um, so I've been talking about different uh, types of AmeriCorps service. So I did want to take a second to just kind of um, show you uh, a diagram or, uh, you know, a, a visual of how those different types of service interact and just kind of what the structure of AmeriCorps VISTA is. Um, so you'll see up there at the top, AmeriCorps in the middle. Um, there's also these things called Senior Corps and the Social Innovation Fund, um, but we're just talking about AmeriCorps today. These are also uh, under that umbrella of national service. Um, but Senior Corps is for um, retirees, so it's for older adults who just want to stay involved in the community as a volunteer, and they also get paid a little bit, um, so it's a really cool program as well. Um, so under AmeriCorps, you see those three circles for um, NCCC is what we call that first one, VISTA, and then state and national grants. Um, so NCCC is what a lot of those volunteers or those service members in that video were doing. You saw those groups of uh, VISTA members, or not VISTA members, but those groups of AmeriCorps members um, who were all serving together and they looked like they were having a ton of fun. Um, NCCC is this really cool program that's only for um, 18 to 24 year olds. It's team based. It's a year long. Um, and so those service members actually um, travel around the country on kind of a core. Time, they'll be at a site and so they go to four different sites throughout their year of service and they travel as a team. Uh, they do everything together. They prepare meals together um, and they do, uh, you know, uh, just a wide variety of service. So they might be tutoring and mentoring for one quarter. They might be building houses with Habitat for Humanity for one quarter. They might be preparing taxes for a quarter. A lot of NCCC teams do that this time of year. Um, so they they do a variety of things and that's a really neat program. And um, you know because you all live together, you don't have any living expenses that year. So it's a good opportunity for folks who don't know how they would uh, get by on that living allowance for VISTA for a year. Um, the living allowance for NCCC is lower uh, because you don't have any living expenses because your food costs and your housing are provided. Um, but uh, that's a really great program to look into as well, um, especially if you're in the age, the age bracket. So I always like to mention it when I talk to college students um, because it's not open to everybody. It's only open to uh, folks who are 18 to 24. Um, all right, so state and national, this is the other main um, stream of AmeriCorps service, and this is that direct service. So um, state and national uh, grants are um, provided through the state office. So we have a state office called Engage AR, and they uh, allow nonprofits and um, universities and other communities to apply for funds to pay AmeriCorps members and program costs. We have a program like that at UCA where we have um, 16 UCA undergraduate students who are enrolled in that. They're doing 15 hours of service a week. So they're what's called quarter time AmeriCorps members. This is another great opportunity to look at if you're more interested in that direct service um, because that's what state and national AmeriCorps programs are doing. Um, but VISTA is the one that's providing that professional um, opportunity, uh, that, that more kind of behind the scenes capacity building uh, work. And so that's the one that's in the middle. Um, and then you have kind of two different structures for VISTA. Um, so one is where the sponsoring organization is also the site where people are serving. Um, there's a supervisor and VISTA members that serve under them. Um, our program at UCA is actually an intermediary. So it's this one on the right where we sponsor the program, but we don't actually host the VISTA members. Uh, we have subsites, which are communities and nonprofits that I'll tell you about in just a second. Um, and then each of those sites has their own supervisor and their own VISTA member. So the VISTA members are not all serving together, um, but 
they are in kind of a cohort. Um, and so we meet monthly and, um, you know, just provide some, some support for them. All right, um, so I'll tell you a little bit more about the UCA VISTA program um, because we're, we're here uh, relatively uh, close to you all. And so uh, I'd love uh, to talk to anybody who's interested in applying for this program for sure. Um, but we have one VISTA leader and seven VISTA members. So we have eight slots total. Um, and most of them are gonna be serving in Conway with um, nonprofits here. Uh, but we also have uh, a slot in Lone Oak and in Hot Spring County uh, with communities there. So doing community and economic development projects. Um, and so the focus areas for those different VISTA positions include community and economic development, early childhood education, financial empowerment, food insecurity, um, and higher education access. Um, so there are a lot of different um, types of work that they're doing. Oh, and I forgot to put housing on here. Uh, we recently added Habitat for Humanity as one of our sites. And um, so they're working with, um, with Habitat for Humanity, which provides housing. Uh, so these are um, the sites that we work with right now. Um, so the city of Lone Oak, the Conway Ministry Center, Habitat for Humanity, Hot Spring County, City of Hope Outreach, um, Rise House, uh, which is uh, the women's shelter here in Conway, um, and Milestones, which um, provides early child care uh, to um, children with developmental disabilities. And then we have the VISTA leader um, serves with us at UCA in the Division of Outreach and Community Engagement. Um, so who are VISTAs? This is just kind of a, a quick overview of um, who's eligible to apply for VISTA. Um, VISTA members do need to be at least 18, uh, but there is no upper age limit. Um, so any adult can serve uh, in AmeriCorps VISTA. Um, you do have to be a US citizen or legal permanent resident. Um, and this is because it, the program, the purpose of the program is to involve um, Americans in service to um, communities throughout the country. Um, and so sometimes because I work in a university, I really wish that we could um, get international students involved in these programs. Um, but for now, it is limited to US citizens and legal permanent residents. Um, and then, uh, so uh, VISTA members have to pass a criminal history review. Um, there's only a couple of disqualifying uh, criminal charges, though, um, so I wouldn't let that put anybody off. <laughs> and then um, they have to meet the knowledge, skill, and ability requirements of the sponsoring organization. And so each site is going to have slightly different, um, you know, skills and, and abilities that they're interested in. So some may be really interested in somebody who knows how to use social media, whereas another might be really interested in someone who um, has managed volunteers before. So it just depends on the site. And all of that is going to be listed on the service listing. Uh, and then VISTAs do have to serve full time uh, for 12 months. And uh, so they are allowed to have outside employment, which many VISTAs do, uh, but it is gonna be the expectation that you serve full time uh, for 12 months. Uh, and just if we look at VISTAs on a national level, um, at, at least 93% of them have experienced volunteering in the past. Um, I'm surprised it's not 100% because uh, really almost every VISTA site is gonna be interested in somebody who has some kind of service involvement on their resume. Uh, and then 68% have more than two years of volunteer experience. So one of the things that I always uh, emphasize for college students is uh, to try to get involved with a volunteer opportunity early in your college career and then maintain that involvement uh, with the same organization or the same nonprofit throughout your college career. Uh, because the longer term your volunteer engagement with an organization, uh, the better the results as far as your career prospects. Um, it just looks a lot better on a resume, just like having a job for two years looks better on a resume than having that job for six months. Uh, and then 62% are local recruits. So that means, um, you know, if I have a VISTA position here in Conway, I've recruited somebody from Conway or from Central Arkansas. Uh, and then 38% are national recruits. So that means uh, somebody might see our position listing for a position here in Conway, Arkansas, uh, but they live in Montana and they decide they want to relocate to Arkansas for that position. So, uh, so the majority of folks are finding VISTA positions locally. This makes sense 
because a lot of folks choose to live at home or with friends um, that they already know uh, when they're doing their VISTA year. But um, 38%, which is not a small number, are using this as an opportunity to experience a new part of the country um, and just really have, um, you know, just a transformative year of service uh, in every way. Um, so when you're thinking about if VISTA is a good fit for you, um, what I encourage folks to think about is if they want to explore a career related to nonprofits, government, or public service. Um, and this is that's pretty broad. Um, so uh, any any career that's related to benefiting the public, um, a VISTA year is going to be a great opportunity for that. Um, and then anybody who wants to learn skills that are transferable um, to other employment contexts, such as grant writing, fundraising, communications, um, volunteer management, which is really just people management, <laughs> or community organizing, uh, which is also, you know, just collaboration, teamwork. Um, so these are all really, really great skills um, for any context. And um, they're, they're the kind of transferable uh, employment skills that a lot of uh, employers are going to be looking for uh, and VISTA will give you a, an opportunity to develop those in a very intensive hands on way that will give you great um, stories and experiences to talk about when you're talking with those prospective employers. Um, so VISTA leaders, since we have one VISTA leader position at UCA, um, I did want to just take a second to explain what that is. Um, but a VISTA leader doesn't supervise the other VISTAs. They do coordinate and um, support the efforts of the other VISTAs and help with the data collection, uh, which there is a little bit of uh, in any type of national service. Um, but the VISTA leaders need to have already served as a VISTA for one year or more. Um, so if somebody is really interested uh, in national service, or they have a great experience in their first year as a VISTA member, they can actually continue on for a second year, either as a regular VISTA member at their same site, or they can find a different site, or they can find a VISTA leader position and they're eligible for that. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's also a great management kind of experience, um, but it also um, has a slightly higher uh, living allowance as well. The different responsibilities, um, they tend to need to be um, kind of independent, um, you know, workers and be able to, you know, come up with uh, with projects and, and next steps for their projects. Um, but within their site, they're going to engage in those capacity building activities. Uh, they need to have sustainability in mind. So who's going to pick up these projects when they leave after their year of service? Um, they need to always be thinking about that. Um, and then they perform activities that are outlined in their um, VISTA assignment description. That's what the VAD stands for, um, National Service Loves Acronyms. So, uh, so they call it the VAD. Um, but they, they'll have uh, basically an outline of what are the major projects that they need to accomplish in their year of service, and then they need to work with their supervisor uh, to come up with a plan for how to actually execute um, those, those major tasks. But usually it's like the VAD has maybe three big tasks for the year. Most of us don't go into a year with a to-do list that's three things long. Uh, so that's why they're going to work with their supervisor to break that down uh, into more detailed action items uh, and a more detailed timeline that goes month by month. Um, but that's why it's helpful for VISTA members to have some initiative um, to be willing to go out on their own to gather information and learn about their site and learn about their community uh, and also offer some creativity and uh, some their own perspective on the nonprofit or the community where they're serving. A lot of times VISTA sites really appreciate that about a VISTA is that they're kind of an outside perspective who's able to come in uh, and help them, you know, innovate and do things in a different way. Uh, so again, just a real quick uh, overview of the difference between capacity building and direct service because VISTAs are working in capacity building, um, but they're trying to uh, expand the scale, reach efficiency or effectiveness of the programs and organizations that they work with. Um, so again, when you're thinking about whether VISTA is a good fit for your career interests, um, this is a really great transfer transferable experience uh, is to be able to say, uh, you know, in my VISTA year, I expanded the scale reach efficiency or effectiveness of the organization that I was working for, um, because that's something that a lot of, uh, you know, businesses or agencies are going to be looking for um, in, in their employees. 
So if uh, you're ready to apply for national service opportunities, whether it's AmeriCorps VISTA or NCCC, um, how it works is that you've got to make a decision about where you want to serve. Um, and so you've got to say, um, you know, do I want to, to stay here in Arkansas or do I want to go nationwide? Um, do I want to you know, find an opportunity in a different state that I've always wanted to visit? Um, and then you are going to search for opportunities in that area, in that geographic location, and you can see some of the different organizations that would host a nonprofit. Um, and then within that, you may find different areas of focus. So you may be interested in education, you may be interested in veterans and military families, you may be interested in disaster relief. Um, so you'll be able to see kind of how different VISTA positions are categorized. And so if it's really a cause that you care about, um, you can find it there. All right, and um, how you find AmeriCorps uh, VISTA opportunities, you go to the My AmeriCorps portal. It's myamericorps.gov. Um, this is what it looks like, um, but you see there those three different streams of service that we talked about, AmeriCorps, state and national is what that first tab is that says AmeriCorps. AmeriCorps VISTA is the one that I've been talking about mostly, and then AmeriCorps NCCC is that team-based uh, program. So you can click on each of those tabs to learn more. Um, if you're going to actually apply for an AmeriCorps program, you will need to create an account, um, but you can search the, uh, the different listings without creating an account. Um, so you can get in there and search by geographic area and go ahead and start kind of browsing those opportunities uh, before you decide to create an account and apply. Uh, and then we also uh, provide the links directly to the listings for our VISTA positions at uca.edu slash AmeriCorps. Uh, no exclamation point. That's just the punctuation mark at the end of that sentence. Um, but we um, will be updating those really soon uh, because we are right now entering our recruitment phase for our AmeriCorps VISTA positions. Um, so our, all of our current VISTAs will be finishing their year of service in uh, May, June, or July, depending on when they started. So we're gonna start in March, uh, really recruiting for uh, folks to fill those open positions. So uh, if you visit our website now, you're probably not gonna see any listings. You may see one. We have a position open right now with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, but if you visit in March, you should see links uh, to all of our open positions. Um, and uh, that guiding document that I told you about, the VISTA assignment description or VAD, um, that's basically the position description. So it's like a job description, but for an AmeriCorps VISTA. Um, this isn't going to be listed on those position listings in My AmeriCorps, but every site should have one. Um, so if you want to learn more about any of those VISTA position listings that you find in the myamericorps.gov uh, site, you can email the site supervisor uh, or the host of that, um, of that VISTA position and just ask them to see the VAD. Uh, and if you ask for that, they, they will have a document that looks like this that they can send you that's going to say the overarching goal of the project and those main tasks that the VISTA is going to be working on. And it's usually things like, like uh, grant writing, fundraising, volunteer management, communications. Um, so it's going to be those kinds of things, uh, but it can be really helpful to just learn a little bit more about what they have in mind for the position. And as you're preparing to apply for national service, um, there are a few tools that I wanted to share with you. Um, so one is there's a link on the AmeriCorps.gov website um, that's called a Fit Finder. And uh, it actually uh, will help you kind of walk through whether uh, AmeriCorps State and National, AmeriCorps VISTA, or AmeriCorps NCCC is the best fit for you. Um, and I really like this because the success of or failure, you know, of your service year a lot of times depends on finding the right fit to begin with. Um, so as you're embarking on a 12 month commitment, it's really important to put in the time to think about, um, you know, which service, which type of service and which service site is really going to be um, the best fit for what you want to get out of your service year. Um, and also just, you know, for your uh, skills and knowledge and what you're bringing to, um, to the service experience. Um, and then, of course, when you're ready to apply, you'll create an account on My AmeriCorps. And the types of things that you'll include in your My AmeriCorps profile 
will be uh, you can upload a um, basically some resume information. They're going to have an application form that you have to fill out for each service listing um, that basically includes the same kinds of information that's on your resume. But there's going to be a big emphasis on service experiences. Um, and so whether you have a lot of service experiences or, uh, you know, just a small number, or even if you don't have any service experiences, but you have employment experiences where you could talk about some of the same skills um, that they are going to be looking for uh, for those service experiences. Those are all good to talk about, um, but the more depth you can provide about how you were involved in a service experience, how long you served, how uh, just kind of how substantive your role was in that. That's all information that they're going to want to see on that application. Uh, and then, of course, the same transferable skills that you will gain from a VISTA year. They also want to see how you're bringing those skills to the service uh, experience. And so, um, you know, to the extent that you have uh, learned or demonstrated written and oral communication skills, presentation skills, research skills, collaboration and teamwork uh, in your college experience. And this could be outside of class or in class even. Um, you know, this all should be included on that My AmeriCorps um, application as well. And then they're also going to want to have, uh, you know, some personal statements. They'll have some narrative fields in that application for you to talk about why you want to do AmeriCorps. Um, and so it's really important to just show that you know what you're getting into with national service and that you're ready to make a commitment uh, to a service year. Um, so they're really going to be looking for that. Um, and then each AmeriCorps um, application needs to have a couple of references associated with it. Um, and what they'll do is um, ask you for their contact information and they'll reach out to the to the reference themselves uh, to have them fill out a reference form for you. Um, so in this case, it's a good idea to just give your references um, a heads up, uh, make sure that they feel comfortable with serving as a reference and let them know that they'll be getting uh, an email from uh, AmeriCorps to ask them some questions about you. Uh, they don't need to write a letter for it. Um, it's just um, kind of a, a form response. So, um, but they also will share your references phone number with the site that you apply to. So they may expect a phone call from the site as well. Depends on the site. order to apply for AmeriCorps. Of course, it's also helpful if you're applying for an AmeriCorps position that is outside of your community um, to explain a little bit about, um, you know, what you know about that community and why you're interested in serving in that community. All right, and that's it uh, from me. So um, I, uh, I do want to go back to uh, that page where I put our website. So uca.edu slash AmeriCorps, my contact information is on there as well. Um, so if you are interested in learning more about UCA's AmeriCorps program, uh, you're, you can visit there or contact me at any time. Um, and I'd also be glad to answer any questions that I can about AmeriCorps in general, uh, AmeriCorps VISTA or NCCC. Uh, so, again, these are super opportunities for college students who are getting ready to graduate and maybe looking at kind of a gap year to develop some more skills uh, and just make your resume uh, look really great to uh, especially nonprofit government and public service employers. So thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you, Leslie. Um, I did have a few questions. Great. Um, that the students may think of um, how has COVID affected what you guys do? Um, yeah, sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to stop sharing. There we go. Um, so yeah, COVID has, has had a big impact on national service uh, since last March. And the biggest way in which COVID has impacted national service is that at a lot of sites, it's, um, it's been a declared national emergency. So what that means is that people who might normally have been doing behind the scenes work as an AmeriCorps VISTA member are kind of called to the front lines, just like um, you know, our National Guard is called to the front lines when there's a national, when there's a federally declared disaster. Our AmeriCorps members are also um, gonna be called to the front lines at their organizations 
uh, and in their communities. And so we had a lot of VISTAs who might have normally been coordinating volunteers who now they are handing out food boxes or, um, you know, helping to do virtual tutoring, uh, things that normally would not be in their uh, assignment description. So the first way in which uh, COVID has impacted AmeriCorps is that uh, AmeriCorps VISTAs have started doing more direct service, especially in those first few months of the pandemic, they found the nature of their job changed. Um, the other thing is that uh, members have been allowed to do remote service. This just varies depending on the site. Um, so different sites have different policies, but like for our program, um, probably uh, half of the VISTAs are currently serving remotely. So they're not going into the office uh, and the other half are going into the office, but the office looks a little bit different. Um, like those of us who've been going into the office uh, are used to now. Um, so, so VISTAs have been allowed to serve remotely at the discretion of their site. Um, and I'm not sure when that is going to expire. I think none of us know for sure, uh, just kind of how things are gonna unwind uh, with those COVID pandemic precautions. Um, but they'll, they may stop doing that at any time. It's just going to depend on kind of how things look at a federal level because those are federal policies. Okay, great. Um, I was also wondering about the sites. Do they stay at the same site the entire year? Yes. So for an AmeriCorps VISTA position, um, the VISTA position is at one site. Um, and they'll be at that site for the entire year, unless um, unless the site that is hosting them has multiple sites and it's set up to have them serve at multiple places. Um, but I'm I'm not familiar with anything like that. So, um, like for us at UCA, the uh, the Vista member who's serving at Habitat for Humanity is going to be at Habitat for Humanity in Faulkner County for the entire 12 months. Um, they're all that's kind of how they're all set up. Okay, awesome. Um... What was the other one? Oh, the full time. Is that the 40 hours Monday through Friday or is it over the weekends as well? Or how does that work? Yeah, yeah so that also varies by site. Um, and so that's something where, you know, if somebody is looking at different VISTA opportunities, um, it would be helpful to just reach out to the site um, supervisor to the sponsoring organization and find out for sure. Um, but for instance, um, you know, we have, so we have a VISTA who's serving in uh, UCA outreach with me uh, and they, we have traditional office hours, 8 to 4.30. Um, so, you know, she serves in the office from 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. But we have other VISTA members who, we have one at Rise House, uh, which is a women's shelter. She may be serving at the women's shelter outside of traditional hours, um, just as needed. And so, you know, her schedule is not necessarily Monday through Friday during business hours. So that's something that each site um, kind of works out um, on their own. It just adds up to 40 hours a week. Okay, cool. So if they have like a part-time job, they could work out the two schedules so that they can do Vista full-time and still make some side money. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, so when, uh, when they ask for um, when, they, when they ask for details about the position with the, with the site, I would just recommend to ask, like, what are the, what are the working hours? And some of them will have it on the site, on the position listing. When you go look in myamericorps.gov, some of them will say in there, like, what the, what the working hours are, especially if they're outside of the traditional office hours. Like, if they're going to require evening and weekend work, they'll usually say that. Um, but it's always helpful to just reach out and, and learn more. Awesome. Okay. I have one more question and then I'll quit hounding you. Um, is there typically only one Vista at each site or do some of them have two? What does it look like for UCAs? That really depends. Um, so uh, on a national level, it depends. Uh, but for us, each of our sites has one Vista. Um, so for our uh, program model, we have one Vista at each of the um, eight sites that we have currently, uh, but then they they are together um, kind of a cohort. And so we'll meet with them uh, monthly. We have monthly Zoom calls uh, where we'll check in, find out kind of what people are working on, uh, and they're able to kind of share with each other and use one another as resources. Uh, at other sites, so for instance, our house is another uh, Vista host site 
state here uh, locally in central Arkansas, they're in Little Rock. Um, they have a VISTA program where they host several VISTAs at their site at our house. Um, and so they're just doing different things at our house. So our house is a um, homeless shelter and they also offer like a career center with career services. They have childcare. Um, so they have a variety of different services and they have a VISTA with each of those programs. So they are all on the same site but doing different things. Um, so it just kind of depends on the program uh, that's hosting the VISTAs, whether they have multiple VISTAs uh, or just one, it depends on the on the model that they're using. So that's also a good question to ask, um, especially if um, you know, you're know you worried about how much support you'll have um, to just kind of find out, are there other VISTAs there or you know what kind of support can I get um, just related to being a national service member? Okay, great. Thank you. I think that's all the ones I can think of, um, but the students who watch this later have your contact information on your website. So maybe they can reach out with any other questions that they have. Um, but we are so appreciative of you being here and sharing with us about AmeriCorps. It sounds really awesome. I wish that I had known about that whenever I was between the ages of 18 and 24 uh, so that I could have done something like that. It sounds like a lot of fun, which I know Vista is still open, so that may be something to think about, even if we are a little bit older. I know, I agree with you. I really wish they would make a, like an NCCC program, but for like, you know, early retirees or something, like if you were, if you're like 60 to 65, I would totally like retire early to go like do NCCC. I think that would be so fun. <laughs> that would be so fun. Yes. So we may just have to hold out for senior core, huh? <laughs> yeah. we'll, just, we'll just have to write our letters uh, to our Congress people and, and tell them to propose that. So, um, all right, well, thank you so much for having me. It was really a pleasure um, to talk with you and to share this information. And yes, anybody is welcome to contact me with any questions. So. Perfect, thank you, Leslie. We appreciate you being part of our career readiness initiative. Thanks.